Hello and welcome to Shark Jets, I'm Skid Bass. Unless you've been living under a rock, you've heard that Facebook slash Oculus has recently made it super easy to get into developing and shipping uh, your Quest games on the App Store, unofficially, uh, by something called App Labs. So today in this video, we're gonna work on getting your app out there as quick as possible so that your beta testers can test it out or so you can submit it for uh, approval to get it actually on the App Store. So without any further ado, wait, please make sure to like and subscribe so I can keep making these videos. Now let's get to it. Okay, so here we are in Unity and I'd like to point out that I'm using 2019 point whatever, the LTS one. Um, and in order for this to work, you need to make sure to have the Android build support installed. So when you're installing this, you want to make sure to pick the Android build support modules and uh, it needs to have the SDK and the NDK tools installed. So just make sure all three of these are checked when you're installing it and you should be good to go. So I've created a new project, just a new 3D project. It's empty as you can see. And I'm going to go ahead and set it up real quick to just be a very basic VR program. Okay, here we are. So to go over what I did really quickly, um, I went into project settings, went into the XR plugin management, uh, enabled the plugin management. There was a button here before. Um, and then I selected Oculus in the desktop version and also Oculus in the Android version. And then I went into the package manager and selected the preview packages where I went ahead and picked the XR interaction toolkit, which is in preview mode currently and installed that. And then I also installed the default input actions that are how we set up our controllers. And so then once that was installed, I placed down an XR rig by right clicking, going XR room scale rig. And then uh, I added the input action manager to the XR rig. And then I pointed it towards the default input, which is installed with the default input actions. So I installed that. And then I went in each hand controller and I replaced the XR controller file that was there, component, with the one from here, because these are pre-configured to have all the inputs working with the Oculus controller. And that brings us to where we are. I also put, put down a plane so that we would have a place to stand. And we are going to assume that all of this works. So I'm not even gonna bother testing it because I've done this so many times that I know that this will work. Um, and it's not what we're testing anyways. So the next thing we want to do is go into our build settings, which is by default set to PC, Mac, and Linux. And we will set it to Android. And we will change the texture compression to ASTC. That's just a little performance tip. And then we will hit switch platform. Okay, so once that's done, you'll see the build button there, but we're not gonna build just yet. Let's add our current scene to the build options. Just add open scene and close that. And then next we'll go into our project settings and we'll go over to player. And we've gotta make a few changes here. The first thing you'll wanna do is change the name of your company. Uh, it's set to default company, but I will uh, just set it to Shark Jets for now. And then, you know, put the name of your app. I'll just call this Ship It for now and the version number. Um, and then we'll go into the other section. And we'll change a couple things. For Oculus, you want to set this to linear. That's not absolutely required, but uh, I'm going to do it. Why not? Okay, and then we'll keep on going down the line here. The next thing we'll want to change is the minimum API level, which is set to Android 4.4. We want to change this 
to Android 6 at the least. And that's that. And then we'll come into the scripting backend and change that from mono to IL2CPP. And then we want to make sure to build a 64-bit version. So we'll check this 64. And then for install location, this should be automatic. And we should be good in this section. So then we'll go down to the publishing section. And here's where we get to sign our app. So it asks you for your Keystone key store manager uh, and custom key store, all that stuff. So what you'll do is come over here to the key store manager. It'll pop open a different window. And if you already have an existing key store, then you would pick it here. But in our case, let's just create a new one and I'm just gonna save it on my desktop just for this example. Call it user key store, that's fine. I'm gonna give it a password of password. And then I'm going to create an alias just for this particular game. So I'm gonna call this ship it and give it the same password, password. Okay, and then we'll add the key. And it asks, do you want to add it to the project? So say yes. And now you'll see that it selected that file, that key store that we told it, and the password that we told it. And it's all set up here. So let's go ahead and close this part. And then the next thing we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna need a package called the Oculus Integration Package. So let's see if we can find that. It is under my assets because I got it from the asset store. So if Oculus. So if you go to the asset store with your web browser, you should also find the Oculus integration there, but it'll show up in the package manager once you've uh, purchased it, quote unquote, it's free but once you've added it to your uh, assets on the uh, asset store, then it'll show up in the package manager. And the last version is from December 22nd. In this case, it's version 23.1. So you wanna make sure that this is showing you the right version. Sometimes it'll have a cached version. Uh, so you wanna make sure that uh, you're on the latest one. So we'll go ahead and import this as well. Okay, now that took a while. I made it go a little quicker, but uh, it takes a little bit because it needs to convert or prepare all the images um, and assets for working on Android. Uh, so then you'll get these little pop-ups here that say that there's new plugins that it needs to install. So let's just go ahead and say yes to all of them. Okay, so it'll also ask to restart a few times. So just go ahead and let it restart. And then once we're done with that, you'll notice that there's now an Oculus menu up at the top. And really we just needed this for one thing. So we'll click on Oculus, click on tools, and click on create store compatible Android manifest. This will create the XML file that's needed for uh, getting your app on the store. And that's that. Now we can uh, go ahead and do a build. So go file, build settings, and I do feel like there's something else. So let me take a look at the player settings again. Look at publisher, nothing there. Other settings. Ah, yes. So the version number and the bundle version number, uh, version code are very important. So for your first build, you'll probably set this to 0 0.1 and bundle version code is one. Once you start uploading this binary file, this APK, 
every time you do a build, you'll have to manually come in here and change these numbers. So just set this to two for your second build, set this to 0 0.1 or whatever. Just you need to change these numbers. Otherwise, they it will fail when you try to upload it. So now that we've got those, we're going to leave those as they are because this is our first build. So we can go ahead and do our build and wait for that. I'll just go ahead and save it on my desktop as ship it .apk. Let's save and let that go to work. I guess I forgot my password there. So let's go back to the publish settings. Yep, there's my password, which I set to password. And this one is set to password as well. It's probably due to restarting. Okay, let's try this again. Desktop, ship it, go. Okay, so if that completed, you should uh, you should see your APK wherever you decided to save it, and we are good to move on. Now, before we move on, uh, I'm going to assume that you have an Oculus Developer account, and that you have access to this page at developer.oculus.com/manage. So you should be able to get to this. Otherwise get up and pause the VHS tape and set all that up and then come back and unpause it. So assuming you're good to go, I'm in my apps and I will go over to create new app. And in here, we'll get this little pop-up. We'll just create the name of our app. In this case, we'll just use ship it as an example. And we will select Quest App Lab. So select that and hit create. And then we get taken to this page. Now, this section here is for going and creating your production uh, version of your game. So when you're ready to submit it for approval and all that stuff, um, you want to go through this one. However, for this example, we're going to go through uh, the release channels. So if you come over here to distribution, there's release channels. And as you can see, there's several different places that you can actually release your application. So while you're in development, you'll want to put it in the alpha channel. And then when you want other people to test it, or a lot more people to test it, you can put it in the beta channel. When you're getting close to deploying it, you want to put it in the release candidate section. Uh, and then when you're finally ready to ship it out to the world, that's when you want to set it up in the production section, production channel. So for this case, we're just going to go ahead and go into the alpha channel. And in here, you can assign test users. So if you have a friend that you'd like to have test your app for you while you're developing it, you can just come in here and add their email address. And they'll get an email saying that they have been selected to test the app and they have to agree to it, blah, blah, blah. So we'll go back to the uh, current build and you can see there's no build and it says up here, upload new build. So we'll go ahead and click that. And then it's going to remind you to do a couple things. It says, hey, your manifest file needs to be set up correctly. So that's where we went into Unity and told it to create a manifest file. Uh, the back button, home button and volume button needs to require to, uh, needs to conform to the requirements, which basically means they have to work as we expect them to work. Um, so since we didn't do anything with that, we're fine. Uh, a version code has been set. So you remember that uh, that bundle that we have set to one. If you try to upload the same application, the same AP APK that has a number that's already been uploaded, you'll get an error saying that the version code was null or something like that. So that's something to pay attention to. If you, if you hit build, make sure you go in there and increment that number before you do that. Uh, and then of course the APK has to be signed and we did that again in Unity. So we should be good to go. 
So I'll go ahead and choose the file on my device. There it is on my desktop. And we will hit next. Okay, at this point, you will either see the download button up here now, or you will see uh, a message saying that it's running some tests. So depending on how big your application is, it's gonna run it through some tests to make sure that there is no malware installed, stuff like that. Uh, so you can click on, well, if the, uh, if, the, if the link was there, you could click on the view details for it, and it would show you the tests that are running. And, uh, if there were any issues like you wouldn't you wouldn't get this far if there were any issues with your apk uh, or if it failed any of the tests you would get that notification okay i'm not sure why the uh, the test status wasn't showing up before but once i reloaded the page it showed up as complete and as i was saying earlier you can go into the results for it and if there's any issues with your apk it'll tell you here if there's any malware detected it'll tell you there uh, and if there's any vulnerabilities, it'll tell you there. So if this shows up as being completed and passed, then your app should show up in your app store. Okay, so apparently I was a little off about the alpha channel. So if you, if you upload your app to the production channel, then it will just show up as an app that you have already purchased and you just need to install it. Uh, but if you don't have anything in the production channel and you want to put it in the alpha channel like I did, then you do have to go ahead and add yourself as a subscribed user. So add, an, add a user and put in your own email address and you'll get an email asking you if you want to be a test user. And once you hit that, then it will show up on your app store. So as you can see now, there's this uh, weird colored icon on our uh, app store on our library um, and it's called ship it and it says to install it and it's got that little app lab icon at the top left so you know it's not actually on the app store it's using this new app lab so we'll go ahead and install that and let's try to launch it and see if it actually works Okay, so here we are. Our hands are working, our heads are working. So uh, everything is functioning as it should. And there you have it, quick and easy as usual. So uh, it's not without its uh, hoops that you gotta jump through, but uh, overall, not terrible. And it opens up your application to a, a much broader audience. You can just give people a URL uh, to your game and uh, side quest also helps with that um, but uh, you know you'll also have to submit cover art and make sure you're following their uh, recommended uh, guidelines uh, so that they can approve it when you submit it for approval uh, but this is a good way to jump in get your feet wet and get started if you found this video helpful please make sure to like and subscribe so I can keep making more uh, up until next time I'm still Skidvis peace out Hi there, me again. Uh, I just thought I'd take a second to thank you for watching this video and to also fill you in on other places where you can get a hold of me and interact with me. Um, I'm currently working on a game and that should be the story for the rest of my life. Um, and when I do, I like to uh, live stream it on Twitch so you can follow me there to watch me struggle and deal with the problems live. Um, and I'm also on my Discord. You can join us there and uh, we can talk about games and Unity and VR, whatever you want to talk about, really, uh, as long as it's relevant. And uh, I also have a Patreon um, and you can become a Patreon member. And if I have code that I can share that isn't licensed, doesn't use some proprietary thing, um, I will post it there so that you can download it and uh, have access to that as well as other things as I think of them, maybe some swag every now and then. Um, so again, thanks for watching and I hope to see you here and anywhere else. Thanks. I'm still Skidvis. Peace out.